Welcome to East Arnhem Land, home to the world's oldest living culture and one of the last wilderness areas on earth. Getting here is easy. Nulunboy on the Gove Peninsula is served with daily flights from Darwin and Cairns. Or to kickstart your East Arnhem Land adventure, hire a four-wheel drive from Darwin or Catherine. South of Nulunboy is Groot Island, a short flight from Darwin or Gove airports. Or you can take the boat journey from Darwin via Gove to Groot Island. Once you reach East Arnhem Land, you'll find yourself in 100,000 square kilometres of paradise. The land is beautiful and diverse, with remote rugged coastlines, pristine beaches, and an ancient Aboriginal culture that dates back to more than 40,000 years. There's so much to experience in East Arnhem Land, including world-class fishing, picturesque golf courses, thrilling four-wheel drive safaris, rich Aboriginal culture and famed art centres, deserted white sandy beaches, scenic flights and unique wilderness retreats and camp spots. Hi YouTube, it's Glowbed here. We're at Nambulwa today, flying to Groot Island. Firstly, however, we are going to head up to the uh, Aborigine homeland, as it's called, of Gangan. G-A-N-G-A-N, it's not Gangan, it's Gangan. And then we'll be heading over to what us white people would call Bickerton Island, but what the Aborigines would call Milyakabara. And then after that we'll head off to Groot Island, looking at uh, what's happening over in Gangan. Coronavirus panic buying threatens food security to the remote NT community of Gangan. Uh, the uh, remote food store in the small community of Gangan, about an hour, four hours drive south of Nullaby, Arnhem Land. Uh, they essentially are running out of food down there because they're not allowed to bulk buy anything. And they can't bulk buy anything because there's no food to buy because everyone's panic buying everything. And that kind of sucks. So, we went to the shops here in Numbulwa and I had purchased a bunch of pasta and some bog roll. Look at that. Loads of that. Already stacked up. Let's get out to the aeroplane. So for all you guys in the P40s, uh, your P40s are showing up as a very strange looking King Air sitting on its tail. It's just the way it's going to be. Serves you right for flying a weird plane from 1938. There's someone sensible flying a Cessna 172. QF area there, g'day. Alright, here is our aeroplane. We have enough fuel to get to Gangan and over to Bickerton, then over to Groot Island, and we'll probably fuel up at Groot Island on Monday. Uh, mostly because on Sunday <laughs> the fuel support is closed. Door open. QF is in the 172. Good work. Not some silly single seat aeroplane from the long distant past. Okay, battery's coming on. Let's uh, drop the flaps. And 
shut that down. Just checking the water compass because I think we've moved the aeroplane a little bit. Uh, three, two, and a bit. Uh, it's not too bad actually. Cool. Time for the walk around. Okay, control lock has been removed, battery is on, fuel quantity has been checked, fuel selectors, they were fine before, switch is off. Flaps are locking, okay. That's also good. Full tip tanks, fuel drain looks okay. Wing tips fine. Tie down is off. Yeah, that's okay. It's about three quarters full. Nose gear is looking good. The nose looks fine. Fuel oil. Yeah, I'll probably need to top up it to uh, go. Fuel drain's fine. I think it's slightly less than the other one. Chocks away. Tie down's off. Yep, full tip tank. And it's all fuel. Looking good. Also looking good. Static is clear. Last tie downs off. Let's see what cross controlling looks like. That's the limit of travel right there. <laughs> Alright, everything's in the boot and we jump away. Giraffe, how are you doing? Okay then, let's uh, grab the checklist before we run off. Pre-flights being completed. Passenger briefed. All right, we're going up to the community of Gangan. Gun Gun, sorry. And we'll be uh, dropping a few supplies off up there, and then heading down towards uh, Bikitan Island. Uh, we do have a position in the uh, GPS. It's not an official position. It's just the GPS known coordinates. Lots we'll of door precautionary search and landing because the runway is. Um, dirt. A little bit of cloud around. We'll be probably uh, maintaining 2,500. Okay, radios are off. Flaps are up. Actual switches are off. Autopilot is off. Fuel selector is right tank. That's good. Gear down. Alright, that's... Uh, Start the engine. Mixture fully rich. Throttle to full. Batteries on. Three lights on the green. Accelerate pump off and then on. Yes. That's good. Could the engine have been started? No, you just you set it to both Throttle first, prepped. just to make sure that everything's working. Just gonna turn them off for a bit. 
No pressure is checked. Emitter checked. Mixture lane. And we'll start the engine. Clear prop. That's not here. Yeah, we're going to Serene. Laps coming up. Good. Okay. Alrighty, so we're gonna essentially fly coastal all the way up. Leaning out the mixture a lot, little. Checking that compass setting. Looking good. Super happy unicorn time. Uh, the control towers. We had a Brisbane sensor online a little while ago. He's gone. So there we go little township that we're going to they're not getting any food orders because of the uh, you know panic buying that's happening at the moment so that's annoying on 26.7 look down to the magnetos you look down and left a bit from there Someone's having a flight lesson on there, so let's go to Unicorn. Traffic at uh, Numbulwa. India Limitango is a beachcraft bonanza. We're taxiing out to the runway, doing some run ups, and then we'll uh, talk about the runway once we're on the move. Traffic Nolumba. Care from Australia. Uh, essentially, the government's looking at shutting down the entire country, or at least Victoria in New South Wales sometime on Tuesday. That's how it's going. That's how it's going. Uh, supermarket chains. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Anyhow. The wind. Wind at Groot Island is showing 140 at 5, so it's uh, southeast. We will be using runway 15. So, if you look to the left, there's a big red switch there with off. 
Traffic number Bulawa, India Limited Tango, taxiing runway 15. Very good trend, must be just interesting hearing that. So, now if you look down from that... Back so to you Dave Evans saying that uh, Foxtrot, Juliet Foxtrot, not a VTAL Bonanza, but still a Bonanza, and amazing to fly. Look at the manifold pressure on this thing, it gets up to 30 man, 30 manifold pressure. The other good thing about this is 55 knots, <laughs> yeah. Alright, we're going to do some run-ups. Mixed to fully rich. Going to close the window before we start blasting it, yep, all good. And up we go. Uh, left magnetos, let's try the right. That's looking good. Prop. Looking good. Prop again. Third run. Down to zero. Happily idling at 500. Back to a thousand. Set to position three. Perhaps ten. Sorted. Drive from Nambulu, uh, Indy Limit Tango, entering runway uh, 15, five. your backtrack. We'll catch up soon, Trent, don't you worry. So yeah, we'll stand that at the Twitter. Back to Nidacom. Drive from Nambulu, uh, Indy Limit Tango, entering runway 15, five. backtrack. Lights on, all the lights on. Controls good. Checking the fuel. Yeah, it's in the right tank, that's cool. This is Remy Papa Echo, just wondering, are you backtracking? Yeah, we're on the uh, 
Runway 15 area. We'll be departing in about uh, one minute. Roger that, we'll hold short for you. Uh, Troy flat. Ready? Traffic number one, India Limp Tango entering, uh, departing, runway 15, left hand crosswind. Engage again, Charlie, 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 Charlie,
past Creek. There it is. So there's no actual charts for Nabula. What we do have is this little uh, plan of the town. There's the airstrip going out of the map. It's not much use for us. It's a 1,000 metre long airstrip. Uh, this is just a little road that goes down to the township itself, which is in here. Uh, what we do have to make sure of is when we fly over the town, to identify the airstrip, which is separate from the main street of the town, which is in fact the old airstrip. So it'll look like there are two runways there, one slightly shorter than the other. We're going for the long runway. The short runway is no longer a runway and it's actually being used as the town's main road. Ah, there's Owen. Okay, we're going to use our swap tanks. Right side now, set. And while that happens, we want to transfer a little bit in from the uh, tip tanks into the centers. And uh, pump is on. Cool. Okay, we've got about 65 miles, time 50, so we get there. So Garn Garn is inside this area, Air of Operations CTAF 12715. Not using the older part today, just using the trim. Montac Creek is this body of water coming up. 
No, we're past Montag Creek, that's behind us. By looks of it, this is uh, Lagoon, just to its north. Little round lake next to it. That one there, yep. So Montag Creek is the body of water just behind us. I'm not even sure if this thing has a name. Random Lagoon. Thanks so much, Foxtrot. I've uh, left the seat out because it was uh, full of boring stuff. I was able to hear you at the airfield, but I've switched, or uh, probably too far away from you in Unicom now. And I'm going to move over to the Multicom 127.15 in a sec. Uh, runway 1230 over at uh, where we're going. Runway 12 will be the preferred landing runway. Wind is coming from the southeast. Let's double check that from Manningwida. Gove works. So at Gove it's uh, wind one, one, uh, 100 at 10. So yeah, almost in the east bound wind. Scattered 3400. We're going to turn pretty sharply to the left now. Stay on the inside of the shoreline here. Touch more on the manifold, keep that speed going. That's all we need. Uh, the township of uh, Gangan is pretty much where those uh, three lines, the three brown dotted lines meet. It's ever so slightly to the left of that. So I just need to aim at that and then we'll be around here. Uh, that, those uh, dotted lines are the boundaries between the uh, ATC sectors. So that ATC sector is the Meningrida Brisbane Centre, 123.4. This one over here is the Gove sensor 125.0. However, we are below uh, 8,500 feet, or even 18,000 feet in that case, which means we're in uh, class G airspace, uncontrolled, and if we don't want to be using ATC services, there's no need for us to talk to them. Here you can see for operations in this area, surface to 5,000 feet, so if we're below 5,000 feet we just use the CTAF 127.15 If we're above 5,000 feet we are monitoring, at least, Prism Center. So we'll be uh, sitting in there, we're actually in the Gove area still and the Gove area should be 126.0, so we're actually in the wrong frequency currently Let's get that sorted
Bickerton Island is out there somewhere. So I'll be heading back in this kind of direction, probably dropping offshore at that point there. Just did a uh, Google search on Numbulwa and we have this little creature over here. Look at that. What about that story? Cossack the Quicks Works puppet. Isle Wooda. Wooda Island out there somewhere. Can't see it really. Probably have to be higher. Caledon Bay. So this area is known as Caledon Bay, Northern Territory. Yolongu people. So there was a... Uh, here's one for you guys flying the P-40s. The, Calendai, the Calendon Bay Crisis, which occurred in this area. Uh, between 1932 and 1934, referred to the... Uh, Calendon Bay murders. Five Japanese tripping fishers were killed by Aborigine Australians, uh, Aborigines of this area. And a policeman, Albert McColl, was subsequently killed. Shortly afterwards, two white men that missing in at Wooda Island, which is the island just off the wing there, right there. A punitive expedition was uh, created by the Northern Territory Police in Darwin to, and I quote, teach the blacks a lesson. So a party of uh, church missionaries went out to Arnhem Land and persuaded some of these men to uh, give themselves up to trial in Darwin. One of the men was sentenced to death by hanging and the other three were sentenced to 20 years hard labour. One of their senses was eventually quashed and they returned back home. After numerous irregularities in the first trial were pointed out, released from jail and taken to uh, Carlin, but was never seen again. So they murdered, murdered five Japanese fishermen that were Traffic back at an island, Echo Delta Lima, I find at a home position, one five at nautical correction, one two nautical miles to the uh, southeast. 3100, shortly on descent two, but at 1000 feet four, air work estimated time at one time at zero uh, correction, time at four five. Traffic back. 
Something's going to be getting. Something's going to be getting. Cool. A little bit of history of the area. 1934. Hello? Thoughts on uh, Tuesday's uh, lockdown in Victoria? It'll be interesting to see how it works and if I'll be working from home Hello? sooner than we thought. Perfect. We're 30 miles out, we'll uh, broadcast on the other frequency, which is 137.15. Check where that frequency picks up. It's right around the top end of that. So just as we enter the area for Gangan, probably about 10 miles south of Gangan, then we'll uh, make the transmission. Now <laughs> on live stream, that'd be funny. Working at home live stream. That would be the most boring thing ever seen on the internet. Probably you break a, a whole, whole slew of contracts as well. Yes, I won. What is uh, Auckland Transport's newest great idea? Only going in and out of the back door. That's hilarious. That's really bizarre. All right, 22 miles out. Uh, what's this region called? Meningrida, I do believe. No, this is Lake Avella. Cool, Lake Avella sees that. Is it Lake Avella? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So we're coming up to the Kulatong River, K O O L A T O N G. And 
of AK broad that's essentially where the broadcast uh, frequency changes. So I'll head up to the river once we're pretty much not quite over the river but this side of the river we'll give a uh, announcement. So the Kulatong River rises in the Mitchell Ranges. The river initially uh, flows north and then turns east across the uninhabited plains, which we're flying over right now, eventually uh, discharging into St. Nicholas Inlet and the uh, Blue Mud Bay, which is that next bay north of us. There it is, river in sight. Of course, that is part of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Here we go. Cash rent uh, occupies an area of uh, 7,900 square kilometres. Estuary formed at the river mouth is in near pristine condition. Tide dominated delta single channel and is surrounded by an area of 51.3 hectares of mangrove forest. Start on going down. Traffic uh, going down at Nicolo uh, Lake Evela. Traffic. India Limitango is a Beechcraft Bonanza. Tracking to uh, Garn Garn. We'll be uh, positioning overhead the field for a precautionary search and landing and then landing on runway 1-2 Estimate circuit time 5-1 Traffic can get Mixture going fully rich.
three miles out. Runway in sight, 1,000 feet. Prop coming forward, we'll do a precautionary search and landing runway one and two. First, we're going to enter onto the dead side of the field. Traffic gun gun, India Limitango is 1,000 feet to the immediate south of the field. We'll be uh, flying over the field to do a precautionary search and landing runway one and two. Runway 1 2 is that direction. We're essentially going to fly over the township. So, as I've figured out, that's the old runway, that's now the main road of the township, and this is obviously the runway. Going to slow it down to about 100 knots. Traffic gun gun, India Limitango turning downwind, runway 12, precautionary search and landing to the go around. Drop it down to about 80 knots. This one have the landing gear down for this. And get coming down. And ten degrees of flaps. Prop fully forward. Turning down to about three hundred feet, just on the dead side of the field. Traffic gun gun, India Libertango turning downwind of runway 1 2, uh, go around from the dead side. There's 80 knots. Keep it. Okay, Township of Gangan inside those trees. Looking at it, there's the main road. Runway is beyond it. Radio transmitter. Ends of the runways is clear. There's a the little road to get between the runway and the township. I'm seeing the white gable markers. Surface looks smooth, flat, no potholes, no puddles. The overshoot area is clear. There's one tree ever so slightly to the left and a couple of shrubs beyond. Over there, almost half the runway length in front. Runway is known to be 1,090 meters long. Going around. Yeah, coming up. Traffic gun gun, the Indian Tango is on the go around. We'll be uh, turning into downwind runway 1 2. Traffic gun gun. Flaps up. Pressure 20, holding that 100 knots.
Traffic down guard in the Limit Tango, so beach craft bonanza. On downwind of runway 1 2. Under here coming down. Nah, I'm not going to do a touch and go. I'm going to get it on the ground and be done with it. Parts 10. Traffic gun gun, Indy Limit Tango to I think base runway 1 2. Bonanza can carry three passengers and one pilot. There's an optional small bucket seat at the back which you can put two children into making it five passengers and one pilot. This township has a population of 50. 500. Traffic gun gun, in Kilimitango turning your final runway one two. Not happy with that angle. We might do the touch and go. Traffic. Yeah, it's looking okay now. Bit of a dip. Here we go. And that wasn't bad at all. Bit bumpy. Flaps coming up. And we'll turn around this marker here. Traffic gun gun in Limitango has vacated the runway to the right. Okay, everything's are rough. And we'll shut it down. Alrighty, let's jump out, have a look around, donate some uh, toilet paper to the cores. This is X-Ray Mike Foxtrot coming in.
Ah, good stuff. He got off early. Mm, that's weird. So the question is, can we get to the town? I'm guessing you'd normally drive a car of some sort to get there. Is it through there or? I can see a bit of a road up here. Is that the right way to the town or is it the other direction? I really am lost. Let's go back to the plane, and I'll just need to have a look at the outside for a bit, go to map mode. There it is up that way, cool. Mm. Taxiing up that way wouldn't be too bad, otherwise you just have to count roads one, two, Third right in. Okay. It's happening again. Uh. I haven't run that batch file, I've just been deleting files for every airport that I go to. Gives me something to do in the off days. Not that road, but the next one. Should be Windsock over there. One annoying thing about this little town is how far away it is from its own airfield. I think the last time it snowed here was during the Ice Age of about several million years ago when Australia was connected to Antarctica and there were dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, couldn't we just taxi down here? Yeah, I'd think. Probably should have done, done the backtrack. Oh, come on. Guess we could have parked it right there. Well, that's the, uh, the disadvantage of these tiny little Aborigine community towns. Lots of walking, not much road transport, everything's dirt. This one in particular, 
they're running out of food and they can't purchase a, a large enough stock for anybody to buy. They're suggesting that the town should come up one by one, all 50 of them, up to Lullaby and buy what they need for the week. Unfortunately, it's a six hour drive, one direction. So, 12 hours of driving every week isn't really going to cut it, and these people aren't exactly rich. They're Aborigines that are essentially subsistence um, hunter gatherers. Looks like they'll have to hunt together a bit more than usual. And unfortunately that usually means going down to that pristine river we were talking about and uh, making it slightly less pristine. This is the old runway. Airplanes used to land on that. But it's no longer a runway. How long to walk? We're nearly there now. We can see the township up ahead. Random water tank. Yeah, you can't get alcohol in the Aborigine towns. That's uh, that's a definite no. Aha, the dunny. We didn't come all this way for nothing. I think this is the school with the radio mast on top. School of the air. <laughs> toilet inspector wants to go inside the toilet. Looks like he might not be able to. It's probably just an external part of the building. I wonder who got all these photos of the, the township. It's pretty cool. There's really not much to do here, is there? Oh well, time to run back to the aeroplane. Hope you enjoy the little township of Gan Gan. That's how I heard it pronounced on a video that I was watching. And it was someone who lived here, so I'm assuming they're saying it correctly, Gan Gan. G-A-N. I would have thought it was Gan Gan, but Gan Gan, so it is. Yeah, not a bad place for a holiday cottage. It's a little bit too far of a walk to the airfield, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, massive extreme heat and humidity. It's about 31 degrees right now, and it's like quite late in the afternoon. 
Unfortunately, this particular township of Gangan is having issues um, getting food exactly because everyone else is buying too much, you know, pasta, canned goods, all that kind of thing. And uh, so Gun Gun can't get it. 50 people live here. But now, because of the Woolworths restrictions on purposes and cancellation of online shopping orders, people at remote communities like Gun Gun are going without food. Yeah, there's lots of fishing nearby. We have a pristine river that was uh, mentioned earlier. The uh, Kulatong River. Lots of fish there. Probably a lot of crocodiles as well. You'd have to watch out for that. Everything up here is crocodiles. Yes, you will need a bit of a shower after all this running. <laughs> Do people eat crocs? Or wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I'm sure if you've managed to kill yourself a croc, why not? It's a reptile. So that essentially be the same as a snake. It's a bit more meaty. <laughs> yeah, eating weird animals is a great way to catch a weird and unusual virus. Well, we're back to the aeroplane and we're going to jump in and fly down to Bikaturn Island. And then they're off to our final destination there at Groot. Let's get in. Okay, external inspection not required. Doors locked. Let's start her up. That's an RPM. Avionics are in. Uh, what happens if to the character if a plane runs over it? Well, I'll give you a demonstration by walking him straight through the middle of a plane. That's what happens. Nothing, nothing at all. You can walk straight through the prop quite happily. Da 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 da. <laughs> That's what happens.
Okay, zooming out, just see if we can find Bickett in. There it is. I'll just visually go to it. We're currently on 127.15. And uh, when we're in Bickett and Island, we'll need 126.0. Let's set that up. Cool. I think we'll keep the flaps up for the taxi because it's a bit dirty out there. Don't want them getting messed up. We might even close the cow flaps for the taxi. Let's go. Traffic gun gun, Indy Limitango is uh, backtracking on runway 1 2. And I do believe we need the other tank open. Let's do that. All the lights on. Alright, let's talk about our departure. It'll be a uh, left hand downwind departure. Climbing up to 1000 feet, then continuing on up to about 3500. Uh, Checking that your uh, seat belts are all fastened, all secured, door is locked. Turning around at the runway, dropping flaps 10. Boarding procedures for infected people. Oh, there is. Okay, then one U turn. Traffic gun gun, India Limitango departing runway 12, left downward departure. Mixed fully rich, flaps coming out. 10 degrees. All the lights are in. And it's checking. Yeah, that'd be a bit much. Into the middle of the green, off we go. We'll accelerate up to a hundred. It's in going straight ahead, really. Up 
RPM to 24. Flaps up. Cow flap is open. Other oh, aircraft is X ray Mike Foxtrot. Don't know who that is, sorry. take the uh, shortest route across the water which is pretty much the same direction that we came from and then we'll just drop over in the uh, shortest distance there down the south. QFA weather, cool. Here's this very nice uh, looking Kulatong River. Kulatong. slightly to the west. That's a very nice looking uh, river there. Haven't seen a good, had one looking that good for quite a while. Very wet. Very nice. That's an Orbex uh, V2 coming through pretty nicely. Just look at the detail on that mangrove forest, it's just brilliant. Righty, so we're going to climb up to about 3,500 by the time we hit the uh, southern river there. Southern Rivers Harris Creek, I do believe. Yep, Harris Creek. So, passing over the Kulatong River now, Harris Creek further to our south. Once we pass Harris Creek, we'll continue around the, the bay and then we'll. Uh, jump across the bay onto Bickerton Island at 3005. Is that 30 mile range? Uh, 
that thing out there would be the Isle Wooda, Wooda Isle. This being Caledon Bay. Once we're at Bickerton Island, we'll head over to Groot Island, which is that larger one to the east. And we'll pack the aircraft away over there. Gonna go back to transferring some uh, fuel from the outer tanks into the inner tanks. Cool, let's break it in. Okay, that's the island that we're going for now, Bickerton Island, right over there. So we're going to fly around the bay, because we don't want to be over water for too long. And we're south of the uh, position, so we'll switch over to the Groot Island sea tap. And uh, what, uh, would you have any yolks or throttles or stuff like that? Sorry, was that Fergo Delta Lima? No, that was okay. No, I just uh, had to do something. Uh, all I have is a Cytex throttle and a Cytex joystick. Oh, do you have any weather pedals or not? No, that's the side. We'll leave them alone to chat about flight sim things. And we'll come in uh, within 10 miles of the field. Make our broadcasts. Yeah, I don't want to listen to Nick and Lockie yapping about who's got a SciTech whatever. That's not what a CTAF is for.
<laughs> uh, oh, and that's hilarious. Another great wetland in front of us, looking really nice with that uh, big mangrove forest, swampland in Harris Creek. A lot of my childhood I lived on Harris Street up in Sydney and uh, every time it rained we used to joke that it turned into Harris Creek. Well here we are at the actual real Harris Creek in Northern Territory. Because Aaron is a Kiwi from uh, Kiwiland. Did Owen go to school? Did they have schools back then? Okay, I'm going to skip to that isthmus and then we'll just pop, pop offshore ever so slightly. The yeah, sun's going down over there a bit, so we want to uh, land at Bickerton. We won't get out of the aeroplane at Bickerton, we'll just let, touch the runway, do a backtrack, and then take off again. Because we need to get into um, Groot Island, because that's the only security controlled air airport that we have up in this this area. So we really need to get to Groot Island before the, the night the sun goes down. Time to flip over. That's the island. So this is the headland, that's the island. 
I'm willing to go in. Let's go for it. And we'll need to swap over to the sea turf. 21 miles. Estimated time 45. Traffic bit Bickerton Island Indy Limitango is a beachcraft bonanza at uh, 4,500. On descent 1,500. Estimate uh, Bickerton at time uh, 45. And we'll be uh, running for runway 12. Traffic Bickerton Island. They're about, um, what's it, one quarter of tank on the others. Traffic, bigger than Echo Delta Lehman, Nova 2, base for runway 3 at 0, traffic bigger than. The wind is 120 at 6, so I don't know why anybody wants a 6 knot downwind, but there you go. Someone does. We'll continue on to runway 12 because that's the same thing to do. We've got about one hour of this uh, broadcast. Traffic Bickerton, the elevator is going around from the flyover on my 28. Uh, we will be joining a right turn to traffic for a second flyover. Traffic Bickerton, Echo Delta Lima, short final runway 308. Traffic Bickerton. adjustment ah yes you always have one teacher that's a bit odd I did most of my teachers would really apart from one one I had one teacher that um, gave me detention for talking in class and uh, I was the quiet kid at school. I was a kid that literally could go to school and not say a single word for an entire day in the home. So when I uh, came to detention and said that the reason I'd been in detention is because I was speaking in class and here's the paperwork for it, the teacher that uh, received that was a, actually a friend of one of my friends. He was uh, the parent of one of my friends, and he uh, essentially said, "Oh, you got a uh, detention for talking in class. Well, I would have given you a medal. You can go home. Bye." Traffic bigger than Echo Delta Lima Nano over the field, climbing through 2,104 We'll be tracking up to the correction north northeast of the island, uh, climbing to 3,000 feet. Ten miles out. Bigger than island traffic. India Limit Tango is a beachcraft bonanza at uh, three. Uh, it's again three thousand feet. Ten miles to the west of Bigger Island, entering runway one two. Uh, Australian approach. Take it. Traffic. Bigger than the elevator is turning base runway. Two 
and make that final for traffic pickup. I believe we've got the runway in sight. I'll set up for Australian. Mr. Fully Rich. Yeah, there's 2,000 feet, I wonder if I can pick for the landing, prop full. Pumps off. Landing lights in. Pickerton Island traffic in the Limitango is uh, turning final one we want to. Yellow leader is a P40, about five nautic miles to the west of the field, and we are dropping our drop tank traffic beginning. And again, coming down. That's ten. Landing checklist. Brakes are released, under carriage is down. Mixture is fully rich, prop is fully forward, pumps are off. Fuel set, seat and houses are secure. And we'll take all the flaps. See the sun's behind us. Five hundred. Traffic bigger than the Limitango. Short final runway at one two. Traffic bigger than yellow leader P forty is on base for a five of runway one two. Traffic bigger.
Pacific Picket and Echo Delta Lima, Navajo position 5 nautical miles to the northeast. 2400 shortly on descent, uh, correction, 1400 shortly on descent to 1000 for a midfield crosswind join a runway 30, correction 28, traffic, uh, be an island. Try for Pickett and he did a little tango back at it all run ice. No need to get out. Here it's Pickett and Island. We are on the apron. There is no fence around the airport. There's some of the buildings down there. There's essentially a little uh, dirt path that walks down towards the town. Right there. Not much here to be seen. Let's get Traffic the flaps up. Picketing Let's get ourselves over to a, about the route. Turn onto the final for runway 28 for a flyover. Flaps are up. Let's drop back to flaps 10. Uh, traffic picket and island, Echo Delta Lehman Navajo, over in the field 1000, joins midfield crossing runway 28, traffic picket. Just tucking the brakes, wait for these guys to come through. Is doing a second about turn onto a third, I think, flyover of runway one two. Traffic beginning. Uh, bigger than Island traffic echo Delta Lima Navajo turns final runway uh, two eight. Touch and go traffic bigger than, and uh, we'll take care of the P four. Is touch and go. We'll go around. Yellow leader P four is going around runway one two. Traffic. Traffic. Picket and Island traffic in the limit tango is entering at runway 12 departure. Okay, everything is ready for takeoff. Flaps are 10. Lights are on. Prop is fully forward, mixture is fully rich. Let's go. Picket and Island traffic, Echo Delta Lehman, Navajo no position one and a half nautical miles to the northwest. The positioning for an over departure. Uh, 
positive eight gear up. Alrighty, we'll just continue climbing all the way up to uh, 3,500 and we're heading directly to Groot. Bumps up. Traffic bigger than Echo Delta Lima Nava, there's a field 2,000 climbing 3,000 traffic bigger than. Bumps up. Establishing the best climb. There's an island over there, we'll just uh, kind of head towards that, so if we do need to return to the ground very quickly, we at least don't have to swim. Prop RPM coming back to 24. Slinging up the mixture. That's peak. All right, Groot Island. Runway one zero. We'll do the full circuit into Groot. So I'll join on the dead side, pop a couple left hand turns into runway one zero. Air drone charges all aircraft. Groot Island is a freehold property of the Anindiyakawa people. Access restricted to the leasehold areas of the Groot Island Mining Company, Gemco and Aliangula. Fuel sources, Avgas, WFS, Carnet, Card Swipe. Ready? Trying to empty out the last of the uh, tip tank. Great Island traffic, Echo Doctor Lehman Navajo. Pops on, we need to go right hand tank. West 3100 plate shortly on the simple 3000 uh, to hold over the field air work estimated time of arrival time 59 traffic bigger. Is that Morse code? Yep. Probably bigger than Holland. End date they approach. That'll be Groot Island, not bigger. Okay, the wind is from 120 degrees. We're heading for runway 10. We lost an engine now, we'll just land on that airfield. That's not airfield, that island over there. Spend the night. After that island, the nearest one is Groot. Groot Island is a Dutch word for big island. Very, very imaginative. Four thousand five hundred. Eleven miles out, we'll start the descent now. Garut Island, Indy Limit Tango, a beach craft bonanza. We are 10 miles to the west of Groot Island at uh, 4,500 on descent to 1,500. We'll be positioning to enter the dead side for runway 10. Groot Island traffic. And traffic Groot Island, Echo Delta Lima Navajo, position 108 nautical miles to the northwest, descending through 3,000 to 1,900 to hold overhead the airfield in the approach. Estimate time of arrival at time zero zero traffic bigger. 
Yellow leader is also 10 nautic miles to the northwest of the field. It for joining a left traffic traffic pattern for runway whatever that is from the west um, for a flyer. There's uh, two runways, one zero and two eight. Wind is one two zero. It'll be traffic. It'll be a um, runway one zero. Then yellow leader. Traffic grid out. Yellow leader. Traffic grid out. Where is he? Eight hundred below. Off to our right a little. There he is. Go. And we've got you inside. In the second. Mr. Coming up, Rich. Traffic. Yeah, gotta gotta love the downwind from one way or whatever. On a heading of something or other. Nice um, container ship down there. It's not a container ship, that's an ore ship. They mine uh, manganese, I think it is, on the uh, group. Manganese, sorry. Manganese. Uh, that's a one part of steel. So you have iron and you have manganese, and you join the two of them together in a big blast furnace, and uh, you turn the iron into steel. They also make uh, batteries out of it. Traffic Grid Island, Nico Delta Lima, Navo position, three nautical miles to the northwest, descending through at 2,200 uh, feet. Hold overhead the NDB uh, and air work. Traffic Grid Island. There's four planes in the same spot. Uh, Lucky, why didn't you waste the man? That's one nearly there. One coming in at 737. So, uh... Traffic Roots Island in Libertango is on the dead side of the field at uh, 1,500. Descend to 1,000. We'll call on the downwind. I'll make one zero. Our destination, Groot. Grooty. Like I am Groot. Okay, Traffic Groot Island, Yellow Leader is on a base for runway one zero. Traffic Groot Island. Way past the point that I wanted to turn. Let's do it now. 
Traffic Route Island in the Limitango is turning onto the down onto the crosswind runway one zero Gruta. That'll be the runway one zero that points east. That's a nice sight. Look at that. Sun just starting to s about halfway through the horizon right now. So we will be on the ground just before sunset, technically. It's definitely in the twilight now. Traffic Route Island in New Limitango turning back, uh, so in downwind, runway 10. And gear coming down. Flaps. Flaps 10, are we good? Checklist, letting the gear down, three green. Brakes are released. Undercarriage down. Mixture fully rich, prop is fully forward. Pumps off. Fuel set. Instrument is set and heat seats harness is secure. Last sliver of sun. Bit more flat. I'm afraid we don't have one of the way. Is that uh at the sun? It's on the trail. Traffic Groot Oil and Echo Dr. Lehman Navajo over at the field 1900 shortly on to uh, correction maintaining 1900 uh, and be con conducting the end of our approach to the northeast. Uh, correction northwest traffic uh, Groot Oil. Traffic Groot Island, India Limitango turning base, runway or one turn. And I'll take all the flaps. Traffic Groot Island, yellow leader, P4 East, turning crosswind, when I want zero. Let's take it in a little early. Traffic Groot Island, Indy Limitango, turning final, one away, one zero. Enjoy the landing, turn. 500. There we go. Great Island traffic, Echo Delta Lima Navajo position uh, four nautical miles to the northwest. Uh, we'll be shortly conducting a five mile Australian approach on the down track of the end of the traffic. Uh, great Island. 
Tower Group, Indy Limit Tango, vacated. Flaps coming up. Traffic Group Island, Yellow Leader is T40, turning base from A10, Traffic Group Island. That's the parking right there. Traffic. We'll go over to position one. We'll push it back into it. Traffic Grid Island, yellow leader is turning final. Wrong way on zero, traffic Grid Island. Parking brake is set. Just looking straight ahead, we can see the... I was going to say that was the fueling station. in there somewhere. Alright, we'll shut this down. Mixed it down. A very wonderful evening in Groot. Alrighty, let's jump on out. Cool, empty the aircraft, shut the door. Got the tow bar. Alright, tow bar's on. Just going to push the aeroplane back into its position. All the way. No, apparently the avatar is a nothing. Nobody can see it. Your plane's position is just the plane's position. Wherever that happens to be. Alrighty. Yeah, this is what's uh, showing up instead of the P-40s. It's uh, King Air on its tail. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Alright, we've got a chock to chuck in. It's hard to see that. Cool, wheel chocks are in. Pito probe. Pito cover. There 
is. Chucking the tie down at the back. One last thing, I just need to jump on or the aeroplane and put the control locks in. Now to the control locks you need to push the thing all the way forward and then chuck it in. There it is. And now we empty the airplane and close the door. And that is us, Scroot Island. Here we are. I see a bus over there. Good stuff. And there we are, Groot Island, for the uh, couple of days that we're here. <laughs> yeah, this is always the worst bit. Tying the plane down, putting the chocks on, taking all the stuff out of the plane. At least this one doesn't have a cover to put over the windows. That is actually the worst part. I mean, all this stuff bending down under the wings, crawling around on the ground with the knees and stuff. That's annoying. But uh, yeah, the whole cover over the top is... Insane. I uh, know the uh, propellers on these aeroplanes are quite hard to move around. They don't free spin like on a jet or on a turboprop. Um, these ones are piston powered, so each uh, compression of the pistons kind of brings the the propeller to a stop. So if you were to compress the propeller, you'd feel it gets really, really hard, and you'd have to give it a really good push to. Uh, move it past about there about what was it one tenth of a turn so it's one I think it's one every six one every six of a, of a turn so you can get about to halfway between the props so you can position the three propellers in in the gaps where they are now and at that point it becomes really solid and it's really hard to push over so yeah there's no chance of the uh, propeller spinning in the wind unlike on a turbo prop where there is that possibility and they actually have like a little tie down thing for the propeller. Uh, one thing that we do often have is a cover to go inside the engine in air intakes because you get insects and stuff crawling in there you really don't want insects and stuff crawling inside your engine so you usually have a little red colored tab thing to stick into the, all the holes. Anyhow that is us, we've got the control locks on, we don't have a uh, throw over the, the windows. Um, for some reason this thing hasn't simulated a... I wonder if we can make something that looks like that. <laughs> Just at the jacks. That was hilarious. No, apparently not. It's just uh, open. Anyhow, that's us for the day. I've uh, gotten the avatar stuck somehow. Yeah, it's still stuck. All right, never mind. With that done, and the avatar unable to move anymore. I have been Musical Avia. That's been a flight to Groot Island. And I'll see you guys probably on Milk Run Monday tomorrow. Till then, ciao for now.